one of the clearest examples for people about the how good the word of the Chinese Communist Party is, is good old Hong Kong. One country, two systems. So an American lawyer has been arrested. Yeah, because he got involved with what looked to him like this older guy beating up a younger in, guy. In 2019, uh, this, this American lawyer saw this old guy just beating the crud out of a teenager. And he was like, hey, are you a police? And the guy's like, no, I'm not a police. I'm not a police. And so he intervenes. He stops this man from assaulting a teenager. Turns out the guy actually was a policeman, and now he's going to jail for assaulting a police officer. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it part of that is just showing you that the police in Hong Kong can now operate with impunity. Uh, part of it is is perhaps the retroactive nature of Hong Kong laws. Well, the laws that weren't supposed to be retroactive. Right. Yeah. But they are retroactive. And I mean, I think this is something that is not true in a lot of countries, but in America, it certainly is, is that if you if you commit, uh, well, if, if you do something that it was legal at the time, uh, but but then you're arrested now for, but, but then a new law has passed that makes it illegal. You cannot be charged with that crime because at the time when you did that action, it was not a crime, right? Like if the U.S. outlawed good looks, you'd be fine, Matt. Uh, so, but I have to, I'd have to get really ugly really quick. That's true. As soon as you, yeah, if you yeah. carry on those good looks. Uh, Shelly, why are you so uncomfortable suddenly? Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, so at any rate, so American lawyer, him being a lawyer is, is kind of irrelevant to the story. It's just a little bit ironic because, you know, he was someone who was probably somewhat aware of like what's allowed and what's not allowed. Yeah. And like by assaulting this police officer, it's like when the police officer kind of lunges with a baton, he like grabs it and like holds him back. It's not like hammer fisting his nose into his skull. Right. So you're saying the police officer pulled kind of one of those football things where they, they fall on the ground and they're like, ah. Uh. Yeah. I mean, with Hong Kong, you know, there was a lot of talk uh, recently in the last year about whether essentially protesters in 2019 pushed too far. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what caused the national security law to happen and uh, this huge crackdown that's happening in Hong Kong now. But really, from the time that the UK and uh, signed the Sino-UK joint declaration uh, with the Chinese Communist Party, Hong Kong's fate was already Written, because you know? it goes back to ideology. They cannot allow one country, two systems. They can't allow a separate ideology. It was a beautiful lie. It certainly duped the queen. Well, and Margaret Thatcher. And yeah. The, but it's interesting because somebody was going back and looking at Wall Street Journal articles and opinion pieces from the 80s. Mm -hmm. And essentially the Wall Street Journal had been saying – you know, before the Sino-UK joint declaration was formally signed and afterwards just repeatedly going, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Some, you know, Screaming this is not, into the void. Yeah, like, this is not going to work out. You know, the people of Hong Kong have been betrayed. Yeah. Curse you and your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Yes, but this is, again, the thing where, you know, people just act like, you know, China is a normal country. It's nice to have our heads in the sand, isn't right. it? And then also like this idea that, oh, well, the problem is the protesters who went too far. You're blaming the protesters. You're blaming up to two million people in the city who've been involved in in one or more protests. You're blaming like nonviolent people who didn't assault civilians. They didn't they didn't like, you know. Uh, it's 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 insane to start blaming protesters for something that instead the, of the regime that's the, committing the, genocide is doing. Yeah, yeah. It's this was a foregone, as you mentioned, Shelley, a foregone conclusion when the uh, Sino-British Joint Declaration was signed. I mean, fortunately, Hong Kong is still not quite mainland China yet. I know a lot of people in Hong Kong are kind of looking at uh, Falun Gong as the barometer. You know, Falun Gong. Brutally persecuted in China, but allowed in Hong Kong. 
I mean, so, harassed in Hong Kong. Like we, we, we saw them being yeah. harassed when we were there in 2019. We saw it in 2014 even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know, essentially, legally, they were allowed to be there. Yeah, and so as long as that's still allowed, it's, it's, it's probably still okay in Hong Kong, right? The authorities going after Falun Gong in Hong Kong? Well, not yet, but basically some of these pro-Beijing lawmakers in Hong Kong, you know, asked Hong Kong authorities to outlaw Falun Gong. So there were, in this completely very spontaneous thing that happened, uh, you know, first of all, Hong Kong's legislature is now just like a puppet legislature because they kicked out essentially all of the pro-democracy people. Uh, And so now it's just full of pro-Beijing stooges. And a couple of them, you know, brought up to, uh, you know, Chris Tang, who's the, he used to be the police uh, commissioner. Now he's the deputy executive, uh, chief executive. The number two position. So, you know, they were like, well, you know, maybe the Hong Kong should outlaw Falun Gong, this, you know, dangerous organization, subversive, whatever, and uh, Chris Tong was like, well, you know, there have been 3,400 some police investigations or some kind of police actions related to Falun Gong. So, you know, we will investigate them according to law. Or he was a little noncommittal about it. it. But it's so. like those investigations were basically like police going after some like, you know, auntie in a yellow shirt holding up a sign about you know, China's organ harvesting, right? Like, like it's not like incidents that Falun Gong committed. It's it's the police taking action against innocent And we don't know. Innocent There's people. also a lot of, because we were talking about uh, Falun Gong getting harassed in Hong Kong, there was this basically anti-Falun Gong organization in Hong Kong that was, was you know. Backed by the Chinese Communist Party's United Front Work Department. To basically just harass Falun Gong People, when they right. were trying to pass out, you know, flyers about human rights or whatever, they, they would set up a, right next to them and try to film them and try to harass people who talk to Falun Gong people. So it was a lot of these incidents probably relate to that kind of stuff, too. But anyway, so this is the first indication that, you know, they're, they probably will at some point go after Falun Gong. And so then what, 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 what will that mean? Does that mean labor camps in Hong Kong, detention centers, organ harvesting? I mean, I think that it definitely means, you know, if they actually outlaw Falun Gong, that means that you can't practice it publicly anymore. Right. right? And, and if you go protest something related to what the Communist Party is doing to Falun Gong, then you could be undermining national security. Right. So you could actually be charged with that. And under the national security law, they can also extradite people to mainland China. Right. So theoretically, a Hong Kong Falun Gong practitioner exercising their free speech in Hong Kong can get arrested, charged, and even potentially extradited to mainland China to face punishment. You know, I wouldn't even be surprised if that starts to apply to any. Falun Gong practitioner in the world that travels to Hong Kong. Mm. I mean, I think probably now is not the time to go to Hong Kong. No, no for anyone. Really? No. Right. Uh, but it's a little tricky because this is basically if you use the national security law, you're using a communist law in a Hong Kong system that previously had a totally different judicial system. So we don't really know exactly what that will look like. I think. Yeah. But essentially, I think it's a sign that they're just going to go after anyone, that, that Hong Kong will not just be another mainland Chinese city, but it will be a mainland Chinese city that is considered a problem city. Like It'll be more like Xinjiang, Xinjiang. than yeah. Shanghai. Yeah. And Hong Kong is a victim of the Western world not understanding this ideological war the Chinese Communist Party has been waging. If the West had been strong, that would have been deterrence to stop the Chinese Communist Party from doing that. If the West, if Great I mean, Britain hadn't even back give to, up. We'd have to go back to the 80s, I think, because once they gave up the administration of Shelley, Hong Kong. We'd have to go back to Rousseau. <laughs> once, they, the, once they gave up the administration of Hong Kong to the Chinese Communist Party, there was... It without this is the problem with the Sino-British Joint Declaration. There's no 
enforcement mechanism, right? So if you violate it, to who? Well, whatever. Ah. Yeah. But they they promised not to violate it. Yeah. Mm. So that worked out great. But you know we're gonna see essentially uh, the Great Firewall in Hong Kong. Yep. Um, we're going to see either some type of, and this is not maybe very soon, but there are going to be things like, you know, detention center camp kind of things for ideological crimes against the Chinese Communist Party, either in Hong Kong or you're going to be shipped to China. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, all of this stuff that comes with CCP rule is going to be in Hong Kong, you know, the the surveillance is coming, like everything like that. Yeah, I mean, I think we shouldn't pretend to ourselves that Hong Kong will be different because it's Hong Kong and they still have this one country, two systems. It's going to be all of the horrible authoritarian things. And some of them may appear to take on different forms, like because the legal system is is different in terms of how it's structured, but fundamentally it's all communist now as the sort of communist ideology infiltrates because you can't have, uh, like once the legal system is compromised by like a communist power, then the only thing that's different from mainland China is the form, right? But fundamentally uh, it's gonna be exactly the same thing. So yeah, like every, everything, pro-democracy people, you know, uh, dissidents, religious people, uh, including Falun Gong, uh, you know, Tibetan protesters, you know, rights I lawyers. I hope there aren't any Uyghurs in Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. So like all of the groups are eventually going to be persecuted in Hong Kong because the Communist Party considers Hong Kong China. And that is exactly what is in store for Taiwan if the U.S. fails to defend it. No, no, no. Taiwan will be different because there'll be one country, two systems, and it'll be a separate system, Chris. Now imagine this regime being the dominant superpower. That's what we have to fight. You know, the, the average between a, a liberal democracy and authoritarianism, if you, if you try to find the average, it's authoritarianism. I don't it's, understand that. It's all authoritarianism until you get to like a government that restricts its own power and it restricts its own ability to go after people. And there's only a small handful of countries that actually do that, right? Like maybe one in 10 countries, uh, at, at most one in 20 countries has meaningful limits on its own power. Like most countries are authoritarian, right? And so- like as soon as you start having the Chinese Communist Party like grow in terms of its superpowers, you know, ability to uh, be involved in the financial systems and and dominate trade with more and more countries, like it's going to seep into everything. And countries that are a little bit that still kind of have their own systems are going to have those systems increasingly infiltrated by the Chinese Communist Party. That is a great point. The future, if we do not stop the Chinese Communist Party now, the United States of America will become more authoritarian. Right. We see we see tiny little pieces of this happening now and we don't recognize it. But like a good example is what you mentioned on uh, Friday on China Uncensored, Chris, is uh, Anne-Marie Brady is a New Zealand professor who made a, a comment on Twitter making fun of Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Was quite mild. Very yeah. mild. And uh, and then Twitter briefly suspended no, her no, It wasn't suspended. It was restricted. It was restricted. So, so Twitter took an action, right, which is the kind of action the Communist Party would have wanted. I'm not saying they took instructions from the party. But like this is little this little thing that that's an American company restricting free speech because they think that's what China would want, even without a specific instruction. With Twitter, it's quite possible what happened was that like a lot of um, like pro CCP people reported. It doesn't tweet. matter. No, no, no. I'm just saying then basically it's a way of gaming Twitter's mechanism, right? It's like a way of gaming the system so that like, oh, it automatically it restricts 
this, you know. Yes, yeah. but what I'm saying is that is that like you, the you U.S. Have, will become more authoritarian, right? And you'll you'll see you'll see little bits and pieces filtering through the system that we've established, like through the American mechanisms, right? Like the American mechanism of speech is is not going to the 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 you know Times Square and shouting. I mean, some people still do that, um, but those are typically crazy people. The way that that people have speech now is through platforms that are owned by some company, Big right? Tech. And you know, uh, we will start to increasingly see if we're not careful the sort of communist inf- the Chinese Communist Party's influence filter through these tech companies. I mean, we already are seeing that. I'm not saying the tech companies are doing it. Up. This is why I wanted to make clear what happened with, probably happened with Twitter, because you don't even need the companies themselves to be like, oh, we're going to listen to the CCP. The CCP finds ways to use that against you, right? Uh, for example, on YouTube, you know, this whole sudden flood of Xinjiang genocide denialism from YouTubers in China Right. Uh, And Sir Panzetti did a video on this recently where he showed that a lot of these YouTubers were all obviously taken on the same trip Mm. to Xinjiang because if you watch their videos, they kind of show up in each other's shots accidentally in the backgrounds because they're all kind of like it looks like they're all kind of outside like some main gate in in, uh, you know, I forget where this is, a room chi somewhere in Xinjiang. And they're kind of dancing with, ah. uh, you know, these Uyghurs who are very happy and totally not uh, being genocided. And so this is a way that even without YouTube specifically going in and being like, well, we're going to restrict, uh, well, this, you know. Yeah, yeah, this is what's happening now. Mm-hmm. In a future where the Chinese Communist Party has won its ideological war, where it's able to invade Taiwan without repercussion. I think we'll be seeing a lot more than what we're seeing right now. In no, the yeah, and like things, it'll kind of become the way it is in China where mm, everything is a political statement and you always kind of have to watch yourself. Uh, I was thinking about the one of the videos we showed in today's China Uncensored episode about the Vitasoy thing mm-hmm. where, you know, this Hong Kong company, Vitasoy, drink maker... They got in trouble. They got boycotted by in China, right? And there was this just Chinese live streamer who happened to be drinking the carton of Vitasoy brand lemonade on camera. And then people were like, "Stop drinking that on camera!" And he was like, "What? What did something happen?" You know, he didn't know. Uh, and then they basically people had to t- like kind of telegraph to him that it had to do with the Hong Kong thing. Like Hong Kong issues without even using the words Hong Kong. There's like a there's a a shorthand way to say it without using the words because that would get censored. So, you know, this guy is just drinking a drink on camera, and that's accidentally a huge political statement, right? Right, and just like the the way the political winds shift so quickly. You know, like like what's happened with Vitasoy is like, I, you know. Six months from now, like no one's going to remember this. It'll be a non-issue and probably Vitasoy could be back on shelves in China. But like now it's like this huge sin that you're getting canceled over. So, but like this is the same. I, I remember when, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, Serpent ZA and he, when he was on our podcast, he was talking about how when he was in China, there was like briefly this political wind that shifted against Apple and everyone had to throw away their iPhones right and waste like all their money that they'd spent on their iPhones but that's because like iPhone was like like Apple was not okay but like everyone has iPhones again now so it doesn't matter right so it it's just it has nothing to do with the product it has nothing to do with any like concrete thing it's just a political wins and yes we will start to see that increasingly in the US the the degree to which we're seeing this kind of stuff in the rest of the world is correlated you know, step by step with how much power the Chinese Communist Party has. So the trick is to not let the Chinese Communist Party get any more power. And so that is up to us. We have to educate ourselves and 
in particular, people need to educate themselves about communism and what communism's true nature is and be able to see the logical fallacies of their arguments and when this sort of communist ideology comes up in other places. Either that or time machine to kill Rousseau. 